Hey, Derek. How you doing? <laughs> I wanted to uh, talk to you today because I know that you and I have been through quite a journey with um, with diabetes and PAD. And I'm hoping that somehow somebody that might be listening to this little interview that we're going to have together could get some hope that uh, they could avoid an amputation. So tell me how long you've been a diabetic. Uh, I was first diagnosed in 2005. Um, went to an eye doctor to get eyes a routine eye check or something, and they just do their own routine blood test. And they said my blood sugar was like, I think they said it was around 300 and like 50 or 60 something. So they said I had diabetes. And that was in 2005. 2005. And really, I mean, you got, you went on medication and you did the standard, you know, you took care of yourself and you kept continuing working. And then kind of take us to the point where you started realizing that, you know, things were going wrong. What was happening? Like, what, what ended up happening? Well... I was diagnosed in 05, and I really didn't follow protocol to the T, and now I'm paying for it. Um, what do you mean by that? Like what? Yeah, I was I, I kept smoking like a like a fool, and um, if you smoke, stop. <laughs> if I can do it, you guys can do it. I started when I was 13. I'm 52 now, so when this all happened, I was done. Um, I ended up getting cramps in my leg, in my right leg. Of course, there in between, I've also had a back surgery, so I thought that cramping in my leg was something about the back surgery. It had nothing to do with the back. That was all, I guess, from all the blockages or something that I had in the leg, in the arteries. Uh, ended up having a sore on the toe, on my right foot, and it um, progressed very fast. And that's when the amputation started. They took that toe, took a big chunk off the bottom of my foot. Uh, I'm wearing offloaders right now. Um, ended up taking three toes off the right foot. It progressed. I ended up having had the big toe removed off the left foot. It's just actually been hell for four years now. And what, uh, so what happened? You... What did you do? What was the pro? You went to the hospital? What I mean, I went to a podiatrist out here by where I lived, and he said right away, He goes, It's got to come off, you know, because it was starting to get gangrene and it was pretty rotten by the time I felt it. Um, so you didn't feel it because you're diabetic? You're diabetic, the neuropathy, you know, that's true. And they say you got to be careful because you can't feel things in your feet and toes, and that's true. At least it was for me. Um, but yeah, that started, that started it all, the one toe, and it progressed. They never said anything about peripheral artery disease or anything like that until like a year after I started going and having the two or three toes removed and a big chunk off my foot. Um, then they mentioned peripheral artery disease, and I still didn't know what that was, really. Um... I had a friend of ours that um, mentioned a different doctor in Michigan about uh, a vascular doctor. Actually, we joined a group, and it was um, called uh, Peripheral Artery Disease, and it's by Way to My Heart. And we went through there online, and we kind of, we were basically getting butchered. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were scared, infected. Constantly in the hospital, every time I turned around for something, it's my feet. Um, like she said, the infection, I couldn't get it to go away and all this. And, and gangrene on the toes and stuff. IV antibiotics. Which were killing me. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, it, it uh, zapped me of all my muscle. And I was weak and kind of shriveled up and everything. Um, still trying to rebound from that. And COVID. Yeah, and then COVID hit. All this, when COVID was around. 
and so really I was in when and out of different hospitals and things during COVID, and I think we even had it at one time. I don't know. It was bad. It was bad, and and actually, especially, I want to make a particular note about what's going on with COVID because if you're having <clears throat> any kind of uh, wound problems or any kind of problems, you the doctors aren't putting priority on you. Nope. They're not putting priority. Oh, yeah. They're they're putting priority on COVID patients. And so the sad thing about it is the people that have peripheral artery disease or heart problems, they're not actually getting the care right now because COVID's taking center stage. So we actually found a way to my heart and Kim. Yeah, um, way to my heart, Kim McNicholas, one of our angels. She uh, sent us to the vascular doctor in Michigan, mentioned to them to us, and we're like, okay, well, who is he? You know, and she said we needed to pretty much get there right away. So he's a leg saver. Yeah, we found out he's a big time leg saver. He's uh, developed some tools to go all the way into the arteries, down your leg, and into your foot in a pedal loop to get blood flow restored. Um, so we went. It was a three-hour drive, but so what? I still have legs. I still have feet. Even though I'm missing a few toes, I don't care if it ever happens again. I'm taking that ride. And really, I mean, we just wanted to make a video for people to know that there are options and that there are doctors mm -hmm. and there are advocates. If you go to Way to My Heart, um, Kim has some videos, yeah. and she also has a Facebook group, and she's really changing lives, and she changed our lives. I mean... Yeah. We were absolutely desperate. We were heartbroken. We were desperate. It completely destroyed us financially. I ended up losing my job because of trying to take care of Derek. And um, we lost our insurance and we pretty lost much lost everything. And we've been trying to, uh, trying to recover from it. And it hasn't been easy. But um, I just wanted Derek to let you guys know that you know, there is help. He was, when, when you're in a situation where you're about to get your yes, legs sir. amputated, they call that CLI, which is critical limb ischemia. Derek, can you kind of tell them what that feels like? So somebody that maybe has diabetes can kind of know what it, what it was that you were feeling, but still you really didn't attribute it to pad. Yeah. Well, like I said, my, everybody's pain is going to be different. There are some things to look for, like shins being shiny, uh, no hair on the shin area or feet, uh, cold feet. Um, for me, the pain that I had, which I was getting to the cold feet thing, my right foot to me always felt like it was in a block of ice. In fact, I had made a joke of it saying it was my ice foot. Um, I also had pain from the hip to the ankle, which I always attributed that to my back surgery that I had. But now in hindsight, I don't think it had anything to do with my back. To me, it felt like it was in a, uh, you go to the doctor, you get the blood pressure cuff on and they air it up, and, you know, that squeezing feeling. That's what I felt from my hip to my ankle. And it felt like it was like that all the time. Um, I've also had burning, itching, uh, not itching, but burning, shredding pain in the calf area um this this right leg is the thigh has also cramped up really bad um since i've been opened up though um i haven't had any of that my feet are warm they, they feel warm to me um i haven't had any cramping or anything and uh, thank god and thank you to kim and thank you to you tony <laughs> Well, because I took... She takes care of my... I still have some wounds on the ball of my feet. Uh, one was caused by doctors leaving bone in there when they removed a toe. Uh, the, it became a pressure wound on the ball of my foot. And same with this one on my left. It also became a pressure wound right on that ball. Um, and we've used... Uh, all kinds of products um, we've done uh, to get some of the meat and skin grow back on the right foot uh, used a product called ACEL which is a pig bladder stem cell 
uh, material that they mix. I, I think with uh, just saline, and they just kind of mix it into a paste and pack it in there. And after a while, it regrows the meat. <laughs> it's pretty weird. Um, with this pressure wound on the right foot, we used a medical maggot debridement at one point, which was gross but fascinating. Uh, no, it wasn't just roadkill maggots. They were medical maggots. <laughs> and you know what? We, we might as well. We I would like to uh, bring some attention to the Better Foundation, which is B-T-E-R, and that's uh, Monarch Labs. Mm -hmm. And if you look up Monarch Labs and Ron Sherman, Ron Sherman is an incredible um, uh, physician, scientist. I don't know exactly. Uh, he's a doctor, and he um, is the one that started the medicinal maggots. And really, they saved Derek from an amputation for yet a second time. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I had a pseudonymous. Is that how it's pronounced? Had that in one spot on my right foot. And it just wouldn't go away. And the pseudonomus is, you know, bacterial growth. It's, you know, it starts getting necrotic and infection. tissues die in and infection. Um, when we got the maggots, you know, they were just little itty bitty suckers. They look like smaller than a grain of wheat. I mean, they were little. Oh, what's that going to do? <laughs> well, when, when the nurse took them out, um, there's 18 of them little buggers in there <laughs> in, a, in a space about like that. And they got rid of all the infection. And the medical maggots leave some kind of, um, what is it? Some kind of... Um, like an enzyme. An enzyme or something behind, which is actually a cleansing thing. You think, all oh, maggots are gross and everything. Yeah, they are gross when you see it on a dead animal and they're all puffed up and munching down. It's not like how it is when they're debreeding you know a medical maggot debreeding a wound that's that's totally different it doesn't stink it doesn't you don't feel it you know and tell, why don't you tell them why they don't feel it because you know i think that people need to know that they like only eat dead tissue and when they get to the fresh titch tissue that's good they don't touch it they yeah. only eat dead tissue that's it so really the pain level is non-existent none. yep none I had no pain at all from them. In fact, they saved your legs. Yeah. Saved God. your foot again. Thank God for the wee wigglies. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then now, for these pressure wounds that had kind of opened up and became sores, um, trying something else now called Kerasis. It's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, where's it from? Iceland. Iceland. It's Ice Icelandic cod skin fish skin yeah so it's fish skin and it's um it, when you get you know it goes through a whole process scientific process what they do you know they clean it do all this stuff dehydrate it whatever um it's basically a matrix so that it, your skin grows um it what i was getting it was in a powder they mixed it with something you know crammed it in the hole wrapped it all up a couple days later it, it's growing over. It's starting to grow back. It's, it's crazy. It's amazing, though. <laughs> and, you know, it's for me to sit here on this side now and see Derek, and actually I'll post some pictures um, on another episode of this. Um, I'll post some pictures of what he actually looked like. He, All I could tell you is he looked like he was dying. They had him oh, on a lot of different medications, and there was no answers. And the only way that we found answers is when we found Way to My Heart and mm. their Facebook group. And particularly, I ha we have to talk about Kim McNicholas, who runs it. And Kay Smith is the nurse practitioner there. And the nice thing about that Facebook group is it's not just a, a group of people that are all suffering through PAD, but you've got doctors and experts, yep. and they're really making changes that are mm. actually really huge. They're saving people's legs. They're saving people from having to have these bypass surgeries yep. and these really heavily invasive surgeries. And they're, they're using new tools to do this. And it's just, it's not real common. And that's why it's really important to ask a lot of questions. And we'll put a link down to uh, the, 
to uh, way to my heart and the Facebook group under this uh, video, but we just wanted to bring some hope to you guys and let you know that life does begin again when you are diabetic. Yeah, there are choices. Don't just settle for them telling you that it's something you've got to be removed. There's choices. Yeah, they might be far from where you are, but why not? I mean... What do you mean by that, far from where you are? The, the doctor that, that, that can help you, you know, if it's far... You just might have to take that ride or that airplane trip. You just might have to. I would. I do. I, had, I drove. We drove, what, it's three hours from here to the doctor that saved my legs. And that ain't nothing. So, and we have no money. Yeah, we're, we're broke, but whatever. If I have to do it again, I'm going. Yeah. You know, I'm going to keep what toes I have left. Because where I went, first of all, it gave me no choices but amputation. Um, in a big city in Chicago. Yeah, it's a pretty well-known hospital in downtown Chicago. I ain't saying which one. Yeah. Uh, but they gave me no choice. Uh, they saying to open up the arteries below the knee was radical. It's not radical. They Amputating your foot or your leg, that's radical. I mean, I know there's cases where people have been in wrecks and whatever and have had it removed. That's different. Uh, and some people just... Ha yeah. Some people... Unfortunately, we have some friends that have had to have amputations and they're true warriors. They're really, they're really living their lives in spite of what they've had to go through. And it's horrible. If you're somebody that's watching this video right now and you've had to have an amputation and you might have wounds or something on your other foot, please, this video is for you. If you feel desperate, if you feel like you're crying and you don't know where to turn, I can tell you. Get on the net. Start searching for the doctors that'll do it. Look for a way to my heart. Just yeah, look for a way look, to my heart. Look them up on Facebook. We'll you put the them. link below. But they will set you. They will help you find the correct doctor that's close to you or as close as possible. And it specializes in actually yep. what you need. Yep. And these are they're just an unbelievable advocate advocate group, and they supported us from head to toe, our whole body. And we just want to say that we love you, Kim McNicholas, Kay Smith, and Dr. Mustafa, and everybody that has Dr. helped Saab. us, Dr. Saab, everybody that has helped us this whole whole time, Karasis and Acel yep. and Dr. Price, and so many people that we can't even mention. Not a you know, long list. Long <laughs> list. But uh, keep fighting for your legs. Yep. Keep fighting. Keep searching. There's choices. Stay safe. <laughs>